Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 32 Manias of Mike. Oh, man, I'm bringing you guys back to where it all began. WrestleMania 10. We hit the X, boys. We hit the X. Uh, WrestleMania 10. Madison Square Garden. I mean, this may be one of the best WrestleManias of all time. It might be. It might be. It's not necessarily one of my favorites. Uh, it has one of my favorite matches in it, but it's not one of my favorite ma- one of my favorite manias of all time. But damn it, if it doesn't have some real, real, real good moments in it. Um, let's open it up with. I'm going to say until I see something else that comes down the pipe that's going to disprove me. The best WrestleMania opening match ever. Ever. If you know your history, you know which match this is. Bret Hart going up against his younger brother, the Rocket Owen Hart. Uh, Now, it's funny. uh, Back in 1994, Bret Hart and Lex Luger eliminated themselves at the same time at the Rumble. So, it was decreed they'd each get title shots against Yokozuna. Uh, Lex would go first by way of a coin toss, I believe. Uh, each match has a special ref- referee, but to make it fair for everyone involved, Brett would have to wrestle twice too, and Brett had to wrestle Owen Hart. <laughs> oh man, oh man, you guys, you know how big of an Owen Hart fan I am. I was rooting for Owen Hart so badly in this match, and well, guess what, Owen Hart. Pins his brother, Brett. Pins him. Reverses a victory roll. Ah, oh, it's it's probably my first moment I remember as a wrestling fan. The whole Owen Hart, Bret Hart stuff, I loved so much. When Owen Hart turned on Bret Hart at the Rumble in 94 in their uh, tag team match with the Quickbackers, I cheered. My little sister cried. I cheered (laughs) because I was like, yes, that's awesome. I like the heels growing up. Go figure. Uh, But yeah, if you've never seen Owen Hart versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania 10, the fuck is wrong with you? Find it. Sign up for the network for the free month, literally just for this match. It's worth it. But yeah, uh, let's, let's move along to something. Not as stellar, putting it lightly. Uh, the second ever mixed tag match in WrestleMania history. Bam Bam Bigelow and Luna Vashon against Doink the Clown and Dink. Now, if you guys don't know who Dink is, he is a midget dressed like Doink. Um, th- He would not be the first midget clown to come out with Doink. He would not be the last. Well, actually, okay, he was the first. But he would not be the last. Um, I believe Survivor Series this year, it's Jerry Lawler and, and Cheesy, Sleazy, and Queasy against Doink, Dink, Pink, and Wink. Yeah. The 90s were a weird time, kids. Um, But yeah, it was a fun match. Uh, I mean, everyone here is very competent. They all tell the story really well. Uh, it's it's just really fun. Uh, Bam Bam and Luna get the win after the greetings from Asbury Park, which I don't think they ever call that move. I think they just called it the flying headbutt. But uh, yeah, definitely greetings from Asbury Park. That's the name of the move. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a fun match. And now, uh, bittersweet moment for me. I promised myself I wouldn't do this. I'm kidding. Um, we 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 have a a last. WrestleMania appearance that we have to talk about. I think this is, besides Andrea Giant, this is the first big last WrestleMania appearance, and that would be the Macho Man Randy Savage. Um, one of my favorites of all time. Number two, right behind Shawn Michaels, who we'll get to him in a second. But uh, this match holds a lot of feelings for me because uh back in 93 94 wwf filmed a lot of monday night raw at the mid hudson civic center in poughkeepsie new york 
your boy Mad Mike went to a lot of those shows. In fact, if you, look, I guarantee you, if you look up some of those old Raws on the network, I'll post a link uh, with all the Raws that are filmed here. If you watch those shows, you'll see little Mad Mike. Um, there, there's no beard. The hair is a little bit longer and it's scooched to the side. But the facial structure is pretty much the same thing. You'll definitely see me in the crowd a lot at Raw back in 93, 94. And I got to witness the heel turn of Crush. Crush was, uh, I mean, if you remember at WrestleMania 9, he was big Kona Crush, big Shaka Bra. You know, like he was long flowing golden locks, really bright, obnoxious leotard. And I got, this is like the first heel turn I saw in person. The first one I've ever seen in person. And Crush beat the shit out of the Macho Man. Beat the shit out. Because Macho Man was on commentary during Raw. Macho Man was on commentary at WrestleMania 9. Crush dragged Macho Man back in the ring. Uh, and the reason I remember this so vividly is one of my buddies who I went to the show with actually reached under the guardrail and stole Macho Man's hat. That's a true story. That's absolutely fucking true. Um, I don't think he ever gave it back. I don't know exactly what happened to it. I haven't spoken to him in years, but we always remember that moment. It was really pretty nuts. Uh, but yeah, so Randy Savage and Crush, and they had a cool stipulation. I think we could bring this back personally. I'd love to see it brought back. A Falls Count Anywhere match at WrestleMania, which I know, hardcore match. Fine, we've seen that. But this had a bit of a wrinkle in it. The Falls Count Anywhere match, you had to give your opponent 60 seconds to get back into the ring. I think that's a cool concept. It's kind of like a Texas death match ish But I, I think it's a really cool concept. And I think we could break that out. Like, if Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman happen to go at WrestleMania this year, I, I'm recording this before the WrestleMania cards announced, obviously. But if Roman and Strowman had like a false count anywhere match where you have to get back in the ring within 60 seconds, I'd be totally down for that. That sounds like a lot of fun. And this match is a lot of fun too. Um, Crush and Randy, actually, it's funny because this is the first time in the garden on a big pay per view where they take advantage of the other end of the um, the narrow stage entrance. Like, you, you've seen it at the Royal Rumble in 2000. I think Jeff Hardy jumps off of it. You've seen it at Survivor Series 2002. Oh, no. Uh, in the Royal Rumble, Jeff Hardy knocks Bubba Ray off it. In Survivor Series 2002, Jeff Hardy does a swanton through a table off the other entrance of MSG. It's a really, it's a really cool set, but Macho Man drags Crush to the back and ties him up after pinning him so he can't get back to the ring. Uh, only thing that sucked is you didn't get a Macho Man elbow. But what are you going to do? It's a false gun anywhere in a match. You can't very well do the elbow on the floor unless you're playing a video game. But uh, yeah, so moving along, we have the WWF Women's Championship match with Alundra Blaze going up against, from WrestleMania 1, flashback Leilani Kai. Uh, yeah, it's a very short match. Basically, they wanted to get Alundra Blaze on the card. As you guys know, around this time, until like Bull Nakano, Bertha Faye show up, the women's division not really much to sneeze at. Uh, so yeah, it's a short match. It's it's a good it's a good palate cleanser uh, because next we get guys who, if you've been watching this series, you know who they are without knowing you know who they are. Men on a mission, Mabel and Mo, uh, with Oscar, of course. And they're going up against the Quebecers for the Tag Team Championship. Now, as is kind of standard at WrestleMania, count out. The, 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 the challengers win, but the titles don't change hands. I'm not sure why this is a running trend at these early WrestleManias, because I know the tag champs change at later WrestleManias. At least I think they do. I, I you know, In my head, they change. I, we'll find out as I keep going through this. But... Uh, Men on a Mission also provided something very, very, very wonderful to this WrestleMania. I, I can't sing it here because I'll get pulled off YouTube. Just Google WrestleMania rap. It's amazing. It's 
Fantastic. They there's a WrestleMania rap where they break down the whole card. Um I heard it so much when I was a kid. I heard it even more when I was working at WWE. WWE. I could probably do the whole thing by heart if I really think about it. The only thing I can think of is because I just talked about the matches. Like Le- Leilani Kai is in a bla- is in a daze because she will face a Lundra Blaze. Yeah, it's very, very basic rap. Uh, but moving on from there, we have the first WWF Championship match. Yokozuna going up against Lex Luger. And the referee for this match is Mr. Perfect. Now... It's odd. Mr. Perfect is coming out as a face, which is totally fine. He was a face last year at WrestleMania when he wrestled, you guessed it, Lex Luger. Now, the weird thing about this is they said that the special referees were approved on by both both parties. So Fuji and Cornette signed off on Mr. Perfect as the referee. And uh, it ends up kind of helping them out. Because... Uh, it's a good match. Yoko and Luger have a, have a decent match. Uh, they they have pretty good chemistry together, you know, as much as Luger can have chemistry with people. But um, Luger tries to take care of Jim Cornette and Mr. Fuji by dragging them in the ring. And Mr. Perfect uh, tries to throw him out so he can count a pinfall. And Lex Luger gets angry and pushes Mr. Perfect, causing a disqualification. It's a bit of a sloppy finish. I'm not sure if that's exactly how they wanted it to go. But it's 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 a bit of an awkward finish. It wasn't it wasn't really the best. Basically, they kind of wrote themselves into a corner because I don't think anyone ever envisioned Lex Luger being the WWF champion. I don't think they did. If they did, it would have happened at SummerSlam 93 with the Lex, Lex, excuse me, Lex Express and everything like that. But yeah, uh, so Yoko uh, got by his first match, and Bret Hart loses his first match. So we have kind of a fun little dichotomy of momentum going into the main event. Now, uh, you can tell that this show is running a bit long. I think they let Owen and Bret go a little bit longer than they expected because there was supposed to be a 10-man tag team match, and... um, they just randomly dismissed the 10-man tag team match by having a segment with the heels backstage, and they can't decide who their ma- who their captain is going to be. So Vince McMahon on commentary says, oh, we're not having the match. It was very weird. I think it was like Double J, the Head Shrinkers. Uh, I don't even remember. It was a very weird 10-man tag that we were supposed to have. But, um... While I'm while I'm on the topic of the bat stage segments, um, there was, <laughs> as I said, 1994 was very odd. There was a uh, a Bill Clinton impersonator. A Bill Clinton impersonator was in the in the crowd. Uh, Erwin R. Scheister was there with them. It was very. It was it was just a weird thing. Todd Pettengill was talking to him, and IRS was thanking him for raising taxes. It's 94 is a weird year, guys. It's a weird one. It's a fun WrestleMania, but it's a weird-ass year. Uh, then afterwards, we get yet another product of the 90s. Uh, Howard Finkel comes out with Cy Sperling. If you don't know who he is, it means you have a luscious head of hair. Uh, he is not only the president, but he is a client of the hair club for men. And he gave uh, Howard Finkel a wig and man does not age. Well, (laughs) it looked fine in 1994. We all had shitty TVs. Ooh, it doesn't look good on my, uh, my big uh, flat screen laptop here, but yeah. uh, Then later Harvey Wolfman comes out uh, continuing their ever growing tuxedo match feud. Uh, goes to attack Howard Finkel. Adam Bomb comes out. He looks like he's going to attack Howard Finkel, but then Earthquake comes out, and there's a 35-second squash match, quite literally, and Earthquake wins. Uh, but now moving along, this is probably the match most known for this WrestleMania. The first ladder match at a WrestleMania, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, they each claim to have the Intercontinental title. Let's hang him up, and we'll fight. If you haven't seen this match, again, 
the fuck are you waiting for? I'm guessing you've seen this match. This match is amazing. By far one of the best Intercontinental title matches of all time. I'd say it's better than Savage Steamboat, personal preference. Um, but yeah, uh, Razor, Razor and Sean just they're in sync with each other. They know exactly what the hell they're doing, and damn it, it's a really great match. And Razor gets the win. Uh, Shawn Michaels also introduces a new move to his arsenal. It is called the Bare Ass Elbow Drop. So uh, for you ladies, if you wanted to see what made Shawn Michaels the heartbreak kid or a heartthrob or something like that, uh, go back to this match. You, you might get somewhat of an idea. Here or there, just look up various Playgirl sites. Anyway, uh, by the way, there is a very funny segment with um, Shawn Michaels hitting on Ronda Shear and then immediately getting ousted by Burt Reynolds. It reminded me very much of the Archer episodes with Burt Reynolds in them. It's fantastic. It's really, really good. But uh, moving on to the main event of the evening, Yokozuna, Bret Hart, with special referee Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh, it's a good match. I don't, it's not as good as their WrestleMania 9 one. It's not. Um, I think Yoko's a little bit more worse for wear at this point. Than he was in uh, 93. But they still managed to have a really fun match. Brett doesn't get the sharpshooter on him. In fact. As what happens with a lot of Yokozuna matches. He's going for the bonsai drop. And slips off the ropes. Kind of a lame finish. But Bret Hart gets the pin. And becomes your new WWF champion. And I have to say. Right here is where one of the best moments. In WrestleMania history happens. Um, all the faces come in. Yeah, Lex Luger comes in and shakes his hand. Piper comes back. One, two, three kid comes in, shakes his hand. Um, bunch of guys come in, you know, they, they hoist Brett up on their shoulders. And then the last thing you see is Owen Hart, the jealous little brother, just standing in the entranceway, looking at Brett. He thought he'd finally climbed out of his brother's shadow, and Brett wins the title that night. Ah, it's so good. It's so good. This is probably one of the best early storylines of the 90s is the Brett and Owen stuff. It's really good. And neither of them are especially great on the mic. Owen gets a lot better in later years. But damn, if it's real, it's really, it tugs in your heartstrings. It's very, very emotional. All right. Uh, so yeah, WrestleMania 10. Next up is WrestleMania 11, I believe, the Hartford Civic Center. And I believe this is also the one where we have New York Giants great, no, New York Giants great Lawrence Taylor in the main event against Bam Bam Bigelow. Ooh, should be a fun one because I remember this mania not being very good. Uh, but uh, we, we will see what happens with it. And um, so... Uh, if you want to hit me up about comments about WrestleMania 10, hit me up at MadMike4883 on the Twitter machine. Leave comments on this YouTube feed. Hit, hit me up on face, on the Facebook group, on the Mayhem Show Twitter. Hit up the hashtag MM. You know, just let me know what you got going on, and I will be sure to uh, keep in contact with you guys as we continue through this WrestleMania history. And I'll see you guys at WrestleMania 11.